Hello everyone. So today I'm here with Bob, who is the, uh, the founder and the CEO of Speakly, uh, along with his co-founder and co-CEO, who's not here at the moment. Um, and he's come here to help me and guide me through the application and the Speakly method of how to learn Estonian, for my case. But there are a number of other uh, languages on Speakly, and we'll hear about them as well. Uh, Ot, hello. Thank you for joining me. Hi. Hi, nice to be here. So you're going to start a uh, a one month long Estonian challenge. Uh, you know, as uh, Estonians, as Estonians, we are super proud. You know, at, on on one hand, we are very open to people learning Estonian, and we are very proud to see that foreigners speak Estonian. And, you know, it's so special. But on the other hand, I think subconsciously we're very proud that it's one of the most difficult languages on the planet earth as well and it's uh, you know it's it's it you know, makes you feel makes you feel special that yeah i'm this little group of million people uh who million human beings who on this planet earth that speak this wonderful language uh and um it's it's very it's very cool that you will take up this challenge yeah i'm very excited i mean you know the process yourself because you've also studied a number of languages too right I mean, yeah. just a little bit of an intro as to which languages you've studied so far in your life. Yeah, your languages, uh, as for you, I, I imagine, uh, obviously, uh, languages for me are the central piece of whole, my whole existence. Uh, I, uh, I, grow, I, you know, I grew up uh, in, in, a, in a home where German cartoons were my best friend uh, and... Uh, and I've studied, you know, many, many languages, French, Spanish, Italian, Portuguese, Russian, Finnish, uh, Estonian from my parents. Wow. In a very, oh. very, very efficient, uh, very efficient way, uh, in a, in a, in a natural way, like Speakly is doing. So this is quite, a, this, well, this is quite an exciting thing because, I mean, you're the CEO and founder of a language learning company and an application that I'm now going to use to learn Estonian. Um but you've been through the process. So how much has that informed how you've developed Speakly? Yeah, it, it has been a very long process, actually. Uh, and the methodology that Speakly uses, uh, I'm the author of this as well. And it's, it's a natural progression. Uh, we have, you know, the other co-founder as well, she speaks loads of languages. And we've just kind of taken the whole experience of being teachers, translators and stuff like that. You know, it's just like small things, as you know, when you dig into a language, you start understanding it on a deeper level. It's just like, you know, I've translated eight novels from different languages into Estonian in my past life. It was like 15 years ago. And, you know, diving into Spanish like that, translating a novel is a whole different. You start seeing things. <laughs> in a positive way in a whole in a, in a whole other level that you you might you know in other cases and you know in in myself and in many people in our team it's just like many different parts being teachers being just language researchers and stuff like that uh, but yeah the methodology that speakly uses the, the methodology of statistical relevance that we will talk about today as well and why it makes sense to to learn like that and you will experience this with Estonia now as you, as you study with speakly it it comes from this experience, yeah. And you know the the you know the the baseline of this methodology is actually super simple. Uh, in in my own experience, I, I I as I was mentioning, I grew up in a in a household where German television was always playing in South of Estonia. Uh, it sounds peculiar, but that was the case. Uh, and and um, you know, I I studied German naturally from the environment just by necessity. I wanted to understand those cartoons and stuff like that. And then um, when I grew grew up, went to high school, then I kind of first time uh, co consciously thought about that. Wow, why don't other kids speak German? Why why what's the problem with that? Why don't they understand that? Uh, and then I, obviously I started learning other languages like French and stuff like that in the high school. And then this juxtaposition between those two methods, this natural being exposed to a language and then starting to understand and speak it versus uh, the school system where I studied French and everybody after three years know, knew like croissant and something like that, like three words, was, was this spark or juxtaposition that showed me that something is 
is substantially wrong in the whole DNA of the language learning system. So that that sparked very very kind of that sparked this flame in me to understand how languages are learned uh, as well. And uh, you know as 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 efficiently as possible. And it doesn't have to be you know that I just. I can just express myself in you know only like three situations or some something like that. It, it's possible to acquire a language in such a way that it's super efficient, but I, but it covers my whole life or everything that I need to you know do with a language in my life. And that's that's the method of statistical relevance that Speakly uses. You know, in a in a nutshell, basically, it would be possible to explain this with uh, with a very simple uh example let's 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 for example take um a dictionary in estonian you mm -hmm. know it's a, it's a it's a massive one like forty thousand words right okay. now let's ask ourselves like how many words do uh do we actually use every single day from this dictionary in estonian or in english or french or spanish then the, uh, it depends on the intelligence of the person a little bit on social background and all that as well a little bit right but in general terms, these numbers are not so different. They are like four to five to six thousand words on a daily basis. Okay. So if we think about it like that, then lang a language that might sound incredibly difficult, you know, it's like looking at looking at German, for example, and being like, well, this sounds impossible, like you know, so many words and whatever. Then actually simp it, it's simplified in by thinking that okay, I only need words and sentences that are actually used that people are using not like you know weird words that nobody uses so uh, a nice example of this was that when i was studying french in university you know romance languages and linguistics again like, like 13 14 years ago then uh, some of the tenses that we were studying were last used in like 12th century or something like that right and then the, then the question arises like why like if nobody uses just vu like you know just like weird weird forms like that why should i even study it i understand it as a linguist why should I, you know just to see the context the historical context of things but just for normal human beings to wanting to study french and speak it doesn't make sense another example for statistical relevance is Let's just imagine that we will take all conversations from Paris from the year 2020 and uh, we'll put all these conversations into a computer and we will ask the computer that, okay, please tell us which are these words and sentences that I should study to have those conversations as fast as possible, right? And, the con and basically that's, that's what Speakly is. Um, it's comp computational algorithms that have done this job for us um, and have kind of, you know, we have given all these millions of conversations and data points into it. And then from the other end, we will have, you know, that's the selection of 4,000 words and phrases that you need to, to start speaking on a proper level. So, yeah, that's the nutshell. Uh, so if you go through the whole of Speakly, the whole course, there's, a, there's around that many words, around four to six thousand words. Is that is that right? Yeah, four four thousand words is the main course. Yeah, is the main course. And so, within um the sort of the time frame that I'm doing this for now, the intensive study of Estonian for one month. I mean, I know I saw on on the app itself it says doing ten words a day or twenty words a day or thirty words a day, like and it's like thirty words a day is crazy. And of course, I'm, I'm going to hit the thirty words a day because I'm going to be doing it full time. But I mean, what, what would you normally recommend? What do you think is, and, and, and are the reasons behind those? those yeah, those? for sure. So you are like an Olympic athlete, right? Your training regimens for normal human beings and Olympic athletes are different, right? So, so what we, you know, if, if a normal human being- would... get that kind of reference from anyone, thank you. <laughs> yeah, sure. So basically, you know, if, if a, a normal human being who just, has 10 minutes per day for language learning it wouldn't even be reasonable to have like crazy goals like that like 30 words per day and they're also to be very frank with you they their memories wouldn't cope with that either so based on what we see from our metrics and and in general studies uh, is that it makes sense to study about you know, maximum 10 new words every single day and then just 
let your memory be and uh, you know sleep good like eight hours per day because that's you know then where that's where the most of the studying actually happens and uh, you know and stuff you know stuff like that so it, it doesn't make sense to study too many words. Um, we see this all the time. People start off with many, many words and then their memories, uh, and then their memory systems will be like, uh, no, I won't, you know, I won't work with you together anymore. And then they will lose motivation and stuff like that. That's, that's a very usual thing that happens. And many studies actually um, prove that. So, so for your Olympic athlete training regimen, uh, these 30 40 words that you are going to set for yourself are fine because you can also dig into this massive experience of link links with other languages mm -hmm. and i think it's very cool to observe um so so basically all your videos about this challenge will come with uh with uh, with an explanation that don't try this at home uh, but at the same time <laughs> but at the same time it's cool to observe because for an, for, for a normal human being it would be cool to just progress in a language without too much pressure and like two like 10 words per day yeah i mean to be honest with you i wouldn't even for myself i wouldn't normally do a 30 word or 40 word a day thing um it's not what i advocate normally uh, i'm doing it more to see what's possible in these kinds of people always say oh i've got to an a1 or an a2 level in in a week or two weeks and i always think that's completely crazy because an, an a2 level is is over a thousand to to a thousand what five hundred words? I had a look through a, an Estonian book that I have here, and went through the glossary just to see the word list. And this, I don't know if you know this book, the Enagoesti. Yeah, for sure. Um, and at the back of it, they have a glossary, and I just went through the glossary to see how many words there are. And this is A one A two. Yeah. And they have like a thousand five hundred words. Or something like that yeah for sure so sometimes what happens with those manuals learning manuals which um your audience might be aware of but maybe not is that if we take a language learning manual that's even if it's composed by very smart people uh it still has the the same issue that is actually proved by many studies and the issue is that if we open up a language learning manual from the middle let's imagine that it's the same a1 a2 estonian manual then if we would run statistical an analysis on it would and we would actually see are these words here actually statistically most relevant for you to start speaking estonian then we would see that 60 percent of the words are not um by necessity because the examples that are created are created uh, creatively and not based on science you know what i mean so it's basically that's what always happens uh, and that's the main reasons why learning manuals very often don't work uh, based on our studies is that you're studying so many things that you can't apply right away you know what i mean so it's basically why give your brain things that you can't apply mm -hmm. by actually kind of taking away motivation that i you know and success the feeling of success that are you oh cool i know words and sentences that i can use right away or you know form sentences in my head so that's the usual thing that happens we have studied this same book as well that you have that you were showing us and it actually has the same issue but it, again in your olympic uh regimen it's it doesn't have such a big effect but everybody watching if you just use learning manuals just keep in mind that this always happens well, this, to be honest, this is something that I say a lot, and that's um, when you go through any course, there is a tendency in courses to try and cover bases for a very wide audience. So examples of what they might do are include many, many different nationalities, many, many different languages, many different professions that you're not going to come across, but they're hoping that there's going to be some of those professions out there where that word will be relevant because if they use the language of the speaker they want to say what their job is <laughs> yeah so this is a very usual cases, right this is a very usual uh, kind of misunderstanding uh, of connections in our brain it doesn't you know, like this is very language nerdy now but you know your audience obviously loves languages as well a lot but it, even the word monday and thursday if we put it into statistical comparison they are not the same they are they are different in their usage rates you know, and th that's how I watch a language, like, and I, I, how I, how we analyze a language in our speaking system. It's, 
it's literally not only, you know, the speaker system is not only analyzing what you are doing as a learner and watching that, okay, I need to repeat this or that word or, you know, put more emphasis on these phrases. It's doing also statistical analysis on the language in general <laughs> at the same time, which is, which is very cool, which I enjoy very much. And, and things like you, you were pointing out that exactly learning, like many people, uh, I was spending time with a friend and uh, he said that I just learned how to say uh, numbers from one to million um, in Latvian or something like that. And I was like, why, why the hell did you do that? It's, it sounds the most inefficient thing to do on planet Earth. Like you just, it, it would have been better to study how to juggle or something. You know, it's, it doesn't, but it comes from lack of knowledge um, in, my, in my mind. And, but but it, it's, it's, it's actually natural and logical because people don't need to think about statistical relevance. Why should they? That's not their job. You know, their job is to just enjoy languages. You know, I want to study Italian because I want to enjoy the language, the food, the culture, the, the people, and not think about that. Oh, uh, yeah, is lunedì or giovedì, which one is uh, more relevant <laughs> or which one should I study? That work should be done by somebody else. And, a lot, you know, we have done that basically in, a, in, in the speaker team. So, I mean, when you talk about the statistical analysis, I mean, how does that compare to these frequency dictionaries that we hear about as well? People say, oh, learn the frequency dictionary and just go through all those words first. Yeah, the, the, they are fine, but frequency, the frequency dictionaries don't have algorithms attached, <laughs> attached to them. So basically, the problem is that, you know, we, we had a chat in, you know, uh, the other day as well, and we talked about... Uh, how a teacher who is standing in front of a classroom, it's, it's an impossible situation for them to take into account the memories and minds of every student. It's, it's not doable. But for a system like Speakly and with its algorithms, it's so easy to do. You know, we can actually apply scientific methods like, you know, just phasal repetition and stuff like that, uh, that supports you. You know, it's so... So basically, if somebody is studying with a book of, you know, words in statistical order of relevance, then, yeah, they might be very motivated and they maybe have a lot of time in their hands, but they don't, they, it's possible to just let a computation, you know, just like a computer do, do this work for you and enjoy the process and put more emphasis on really you know pronunciating and you know just enjoying the language and that's what i really enjoy about speakly is that it takes away all this pressure of what should i study when to study you know it just gives you all the exercises covering all all parts of the language comprehension you know production everything at the same time giving you the, the free range of just enjoy the language you know and without even thinking about anything else. Okay, so when I'm going through Speakly, then it's gonna teach me the things I need to know, where I need to know them and things that are the most common and it will go up. And I, I remember seeing, obviously there's a, there's a there's kind of a gauge, isn't there, how many words you know as you go through. Yeah. Um, so if I were to do this 30, 40 words a day for a month, where would you expect me to get by the end of July? Very practically, you will arrive to 12. Uh, if you if you go 40 words per day, you will arrive to 1200 words in 30 days, right? So it's so basically 1200 words. And this is interesting about statistical relevance as well, is that, you know, if people usually think about statistical relevance, they, it's, it's, they, they don't, they don't think about that. The first words are more statistically relevant than the next ones, you know? So when you are learning the 1200 most relevant words, it means that they actually are not like 25% of 4,000 words. They are actually much more because they are more used in actual conversations. So what we see based on research is that 1200 words uh, makes up about 70% of any real life situation because it just fills up the gaps. So okay. that's why the first kind of curve of starting a language from the beginning is so steep because these words make up the whole foundation of the language in general. 
Uh, and then everything that comes afterwards is just a plus. So that's why I usually, when people ask us in, in our support or, or me, or I, I tell that if they finish studying the 4,000 word course in Speakly, then after that, it doesn't make sense to study words separately anymore. It's so much more efficient to study from context because I already know how to, the foundation and how to put it together naturally kind of um because it's already 90 percent. so so basically for everybody who's thinking about statistical relevance in our study 1200 words make up around 70 percent of any real life situation and 4000 words make up around 90 percent of all real life situations so you see the efficiency here it's mm -hmm. much more efficient to arrive to 1200 words than to, you know to four to four thousand words if you know what i mean yeah i think i see what you mean so i mean if I were to think of those kinds of, I mean, if I think of what I've just done now, I've just, I've just been studying Cornish and I got to my exam and, and sat my exam in Cornish. I'd like to think that a lot of what I learned was very practical. Um, we definitely used it a lot, which was good. Um, it's difficult to say for a language like Cornish because it's not, it's not the same as Estonian where you have lots of media and, and different things, maybe to get the statistical uh, analysis right for, for the language. In the same way, because there are only or any weekly sort of radio station things and stuff like that that you could maybe get items from, um, but it it felt like a roundabout. I'd say if I were to compare it to my Turkish when I did the A two exam, it feels a roundabout there, roundabout. And I, I my my feeling is about a thousand two hundred words would be around an A two ish level if we were to look at the CEFR levels. Yeah, is that what you'd expect as well. Yes, yeah, around this, yeah, exactly. So, what we see is, yeah, Speakly currently has about half a million users, and we have a bunch of success, day, success kind of examples of learners as well. Many of them who have done the Estonian um, states, you know, language tests. Uh, that would be a cool challenge, by the way, for you as well. Just to after this month do the A2 Estonian uh, language test. Uh, I think people would be ex excited about this. But anyways, um, if so, what we see is that if people arrived to the end of the, Sto uh, the Estonian course in Speakly, it's four thousand words, and obviously, you know, st just studying words in Speakly is passive skills. We are turning these skill, passive skills into active with different exercises, like listening exercises and you know live situations, but like dialogues basically in the app and stuff like that. So, um, so it's it's still passive skills, but but we are turning it just you know active step by step as you go through the course, um, a little retroactively. You know what I mean? It's like passive skills always go first and then active come lagging behind a little bit by by just activating it with listening and stuff like that so uh, so when people arrive to the end of the stoning course and speak they basically have a b2 level and they are able to do the b2 exam that's what we see wow okay that's pretty impressive and i mean with what you mentioned the other elements to the course so it's not just looking at sort of sentences and words that you pick up and you move on you've also got these other elements as well right in between so listening things so what kind of things will i expect to see during exactly that? so so the cool thing about speaking is that everything is based on statistical relevance as we are crazy scientists so basically as you you know if you start from zero from estonian from an estonian course as i understand you have a little bit of uh, knowledge from Estonia at just a bit but still it okay. makes sense to start from zero because then you will fill in the gaps of statistical relevance as well because that's very often the case that people have some gaps that they are missing so if you start from there then the cool thing about Speakly is that it will open up different exercises like dialogues and listening exercises and even music recommendations by the way based on how many words you have learned so that is with the goal that we would be sure that you will understand the exercise, but still we will challenge you. Uh, so it's it's not going to be childish and easy, but you will be you know in the flow basically in in the middle of okay I kind of understand but I'm challenging myself at the same time, and you're just moving through the course like that, always challenging yourself, always keeping yourself on the on the brink of your capabilities, but at the same time. We're making sure that 
nothing would be too difficult for you so that basically exercises open up based on how you progress and this is also on based on statistical relevance so if you encounter a listening exercise then all the all the words and phrases and everything is in also in the listening exercise are also <laughs> analyzed by our alg algorithms to make sure that these are actually properly comply you know complicable with the statistical relevance method wow Wow. <laughs> so, I mean, it, it's analyzing all the way through the course as well. So yeah. as I'm going through it, it's, it's sort of taking note of, of what I do right, what I do wrong, what I find difficult, what I find easy. All these kinds of things have been taken. Into yeah, exactly. Even the pace of, you know, in speaking, there are different modes of stu studying. You can use multiple options mode to learn new words this is obviously easier but just for people who don't want to write in their um in their app you know phones for example but you can also use a writing uh, mode which takes more time but it's more efficient and it a little bit depends on your learning style or preference as well you know it, may, people usually do this selection um based on an intuition and it's and it's usually correct <laughs> you know what i mean it's you know the, the intuitive feeling of how it's comfortable for me to study usually complies with what your learning style actually is so it's um you can you know as you uh, as you start your your own study experience you will have this option to choose even on a daily basis uh, if you want to study on multiple options or writing mode or combine them both for even like to to have more varied studies Mm -hmm. um the writing mode is more efficient because you really have to produce the language obviously yeah. uh, and uh, in those different modes uh, the application even watches things like how fast do you uh, how, how fast do you type or how fast do you make the selection and you know stuff like that so it, there are many many attributes uh, for that wow okay <laughs> <laughs> no pressure then <laughs> yeah okay. no it's actually no pressure because you can yeah. just enjoy the language you, you know what i what i really uh what i really encourage people to do usually is that they wouldn't just swish through the study content but would take time to explore the language a little bit so with on every study card what i do myself i'm studying italian on a intermediate two level at the moment uh, which is about like 1700 words or something then on every study card, it just takes time to repeat the pronunciation several times. Uh, then there, uh, on the study cards, there is always a um, grammar area attached. So I just take time to read through the grammar area. It usually has like little little bits of piece, uh, bits and pieces, not to overwhelm you, but just to give you a little bit of things that you need to know. And it's all also obviously possible to go to the general grammar area where all the major things are covered. But again, not to overwhelm you with too many things, but just give you the more, even, you know, think, thinking about grammar, it's, it's composed from the statistical relevance point of view. Yeah. You know, everything is just, uh, you know, efficiently like that. And just take time and just move from one exercise to, to the other. And uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's fun like that. You don't even need to think about anything else. Well, a couple of things that you said during this conversation, one was about the um, sort of the French grammar that you wouldn't normally see in normal or hear in normal conversation nowadays. It's used in literature. Um, the other thing uh, is about the statistical relevance and looking at a language like Estonian, obviously it's um, like its, its sister language is Finnish. Um, it is a language that has a lot of cases, right? So this crazy case system of lots and lots of cases. Um, does that factor in as well? So are the cases that are less used or not very well used, they would also be um, covered as they're needed for you normal usual conversation. Great question. So yeah, for sure. <laughs> so that's the uh, that's uh, you know every aspect of the language has these things. You know we were talking about that um, based on based on our own own research, research, and we have been doing this for the last eight years now. Uh, which is a long time, but you know that's just what I love to do, just analyzing languages and people's study patterns, even the tenses. You know, you might think that, okay, let's do like that, that okay, let's um, let's study, really study the 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 Spanish verb parar, for example, to stop or to to halt. Okay, and then you will take all those all those tenses and then you just memorize them. 
even the even different forms like me, you, and we, even these are statistically different in their application. You know what I mean? So it's again, people are studying those things by heart as a whole, but in reality, it doesn't make sense um, because to really arrive, what Speakly uh, what what Speakly wants to do is to give you the kind of the short shortest way to start applying the language right so just start speaking and if we can make the selection that okay you don't need these tense forms then we are going to do it but obviously the support the support to study all of them is going to be always in the application so you will find the conjugation tables and everything are are there passively we are going to guide you there from time to time as well but we are going to make we put emphasis on the things that you really really need it's funny you mentioned that because I remember when I was studying Turkish in the in the class, there were a number of people who couldn't really get the whole, we're not going to study all of this tense, just learn this one thing. And we did this as part of the, uh, the UNOS Emre Institute. Did a pretty good job with our Turkish, to be fair to them. Um, and they teach it, but because people were so used to that formal way of learning and they wanted the whole list of, but how do you conjugate the entire verb and how do you decline everything? And, but we don't really need that yet, but you could see there's this uh, kind of almost frustration that they want to know it because they think they have to know it, to know the language. So I guess you, you get over that by having it available for those that really, really, really want to see it but you don't necessarily teach that actively. For sure. There is a learning curve going on at the moment in all kinds of ways in education, as you know, uh, and in language learning as well. You know, MacGyver has always had a mullet. Therefore, let's all have mullets. This kind of a, like, you know, a, a point of view to, or perspective to the world is very global in general. So all kinds of innovations always take a little learning curve. That, that's, but that's fine. Uh, you know, that's, that's, that's totally fine. We have a bunch of users who are learning with Speakly and they feel that, okay, I'm learning random words. But why am I doing that? Mm. But in general, you know, they understand the method. It, it, but it might feel that, okay, why am I learning like I am? And now I'm learning like I went, like what, what is this? What, what, what's happening? And, but, it, but it's just important to trust the application to give you to understand that it basically um is watching you what you know and what you don't know and it's giving you basically everything to build up the the foundations of the language but yeah it's totally understandable that people would be um you know in their psychology they would have the craving of i need to know everything mm -hmm. structurally uh, but if, if but if we think about how we did this uh, naturally as children, we, that wasn't the case, right? We didn't want to know everything structurally. We wanted to, we just picked up things that are statistically relevant. Especially, it's fun to see how parents uh, are speaking to their kids. Like I'm I'm talking to my uh, my daughter, and I'm I'm always kind of um, observing myself. And uh, there, is a, there is a fun little thing, like your audience might recognize themselves if they have children, is that we never say to our kids, uh, you know, I'm going to the kitchen. We are, we are saying, you know, mommy is going to the kitchen mm -hmm. and stuff like that. So even subconsciously, we are teaching our kids the statistically most relevant words as we go, um, mm -hmm. because we're <laughs> repeating the word mommy, which is statistically number one word for a kid uh in distress by the way yeah. uh right so it's That's true. you know it's it's so cool to see those patterns and it goes very deep actually if you start analyzing this but it's it's very much visible from research that such statistical relevance is all already ingrained in ourselves mm -hmm. in, and in our mode vivo uh, or you know, mode of existence that it's just kind of not study it's it's not uh, the, the question is not to learn how to use it, but to forget how to how we were taught in school, basically <laughs> to go back to the natural way of uh, acquiring things. You know, that's so that's the, how I see it. I mean, I suppose the advantage is you're going back to the natural way, but you're still using language that we are, you're still using the language knowledge that we've already gained as adults. You're not going back to that sort of 
I'll show you a picture of a dog and say dog. <laughs> <laughs> For me, that that's counterintuitive. For me, that I mean, I, I'm not yeah. a child. I, I don't need to see a picture of a dog and then be told to <laughs> without any words because. That for me is just a nonsense. So I'm glad that you do it with, <laughs> with words so that at least, you know, you, because that makes sense to me, right? I, as, as an adult, you can, you can see a word, can't you? And you can read. So you're giving people the tools with the language to be able to then recognize it in other contexts, potentially. Say they go to Estonia after they're halfway through the course. It, it, it's not like, oh, I don't know how to read any of this. All I know is it's pictures. Yeah, you're making uh, you're making reference to some applications here, as I as I, as I see from the from the paratext. But yeah, uh, yeah, you're absolutely correct that there there are specific things that are more applicable to people to human beings who are adults. Um, it's very it's very visible in different research as well for example if we read if we read research about learning styles we see that kids are very kinesthetic and uh, intuitively open and as people grow older they will become more visual and analytical and stuff like that which is so obvious um, so all the methods that are used need to comply with this obviously yeah absolutely so what do you think then are there any definite pieces of advice that you think I should take on board. Okay, I mean, getting Speakly, downloading it, going through it, starting the course is obvious. Um, splitting up the day to do some in the morning, some in the evening. Do you think that's a good idea? Do you think there are things that I should focus on more, repeat more? Any pieces of advice from somebody who created this? I mean, if anyone's going to know these tricks and tips, it's going to be you. So for sure, I'm all ears. So the main, so the main thing is obviously for for, for uh, people who are not professional language uh, aficionados like you, then I would I would say that okay, try to link your daily studies with. Um, habits that you have already formed, right? So yeah, if you're commuting. Uh, try to link it with that because it's easier to link with an already existing habit. But for you, it's it's probably more conscious that you are already organized to organize your study uh, studies yourself very very con consciously. Uh, but but from from the point of view of what to do in studies to be efficient, there I usually recommend a kind of like a two two um, point system. The first point is to reach your daily goal that you're going to set to yourself. Uh, in your case, it's something like 30, 40 words then. And everything that's happening in the study area, again, I was mentioning this before, you don't have to worry about anything else. The study area will give you everything you need. It will ask you, you know, it will, it will tell you to form sentences when you're ready for this. It will ask you to write full sentences when you're ready for this. It will open up different exercises and stuff like that. So that all happens automatically. But one thing that people you sometimes discard is the daily listening. And this is something that you and your audience obviously understands how important is cre creating the language environment mm -hmm. uh, around yourself. And that's something that people usually don't understand. And we really, re we really need to kind of remind them that, uh, that, you know, we were having a discussion the other day about this, that if you could choose to study five new words or start listening to a listening exercise that mimics the real environment that then I think all polyglots or people who have had success with languages would choose the latter one um, because they understand that the environment comes first and then you, you, picking up words and stuff would come later. So that's what I would really recommend with Speakly is to use the listening exercises. Mm -hmm. um, so usually they are like five to 10 to 15 minutes long. They have transcripts, obviously, and translations, but just to play them in the background. And the, the main tip that people also maybe discard is that they, will, they don't listen to these listening exercises for several times. They will just take the listening exercise and be like, okay, one time. And then I will move to the next thing. And this is a very direct pro product from the education system because it's like, okay, this part is done. Now let's go to the next. And then, and, but it's very counterintuitive actually, because why should I move from one thing to another if my memory hasn't even dealt with, you know, with the previous thing? So in, 
in the example of Speakly, the most efficient thing is to take one listening exercise that opens up if you start studying and just listen to this for the first five days without even going into other listening exercises. That would, would be the best thing, like once or twice per day, uh, just, just this one listening exercise. And, you know, sometimes people ask, okay, cool, I'm doing this with Estonian radio. Okay, that's also fine. But what people need to understand is that in Estonian radio, first of all, people who are speaking there, they are speaking on another level. They are not taking into account, per se, the statistical relevance of the language. You know what I mean? They are, yes, they are using statistically relevant words, and it's all there, but you are not ready for this because you don't have the foundation of statistical relevance yet formed. So why the speakly listening exercises are better for daily listening is that they consciously use statistically most relevant words that you will encounter in the study area as well and that you have already studied and that you will continue with so instead of you know in your case you don't feel discouraged uh, if you encounter texts that you don't understand but many people do you know that's what we see uh, i imagine that you know you are like oh this is a challenge i don't understand the word right but and you know for me it's the same thing but usually for people, it's like, oh, I don't understand the word. <laughs> you know, it's like, it's very discouraging. Uh, but really, from a point of view of statistical relevance, it really makes sense. And I, I see that people who take one speak listening exercise and listen to it like five to seven days in a row without changing it, and then go to the next one, they are the fastest in their progress. Because it's like, just after four or five listenings, you will already be like, oh, okay, I don't know why, but I understand this dude, you know? Yeah. And <laughs> it's like, it just makes sense. I suppose, I mean, it, it kind of goes back to the idea of um, comprehensible input. Things that if you've got, if most of what you're listening to or reading is, is mainly comprehensible to you, you're going to be able to take it in a lot more easily and absorb it a lot more easily. Mm -hmm. Then say, for example, picking out, like you say, I mean, my mind sort of looks at words and sees things and um and so i i find it quite fun to to hear things so when i went through i mean i as i say i went through the glossary of this book just to mm -hmm. see what the what sort of awaits me in estonian what kind of words i know will be similar or easy for me to pick up easy to remember and i noticed that there are a lot of germanic words that have been slightly modified and sometimes in a very specific way modified in, in estonian yeah. like s's tend to be missing from german words and then they go in or into a state. <laughs> um, some, some words are elongated, the vowels are elongated in Estonian, uh, but you can tell that they're either similar to German or Swedish somewhere there. Um, so there are certain things that I've noticed in Estonian that, yeah, I mean, are, are going to be a help for, for me learning it. And having done a little bit of Finnish as well in the past, there are some words that look like uh, Finnish words that I, mm -hmm. I know. So I'm going to have some hooks it doesn't mean that I know enough words to be able to say anything near sort of an even a, an A1 level yet. Mm -hmm. uh, but I was just curious to see. And so my mind does work like that. But from your advice, I'm probably going to just focus more on on what you've already put into Speakly and make the most out of Speakly. Exactly. So that, yeah. that's that like even even though your mind will pick up those connections better from a real life radio show as well, it still has the same issue. Um, mm -hmm. It's, it's basically like, you know, people sometimes ask me what, what, it, you know, for example, they are on an intermediate level in, in, in English or, you know, many Estonian people like have this issue that they want to activate their English skills. They understand, but they don't, can't speak it. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then they, they will ask me, write to me that, okay, what should I do that? I've heard it's a good idea to take a novel and start translating it and then, you know, read it. And then I usually say that, well, that's the worst thing that you can do right now. And the reason why it's the worst thing is that a novel has a specific method of reading. You will have a page and then you will turn the next page and then you will turn the next page and then you will turn the next page and you will never have the necessary kind of repetition happening on the basis of these mm -hmm. pages. And I have a problem with this because based on studies, it doesn't, it doesn't comply with what we, what we see in the data. Basically, what we see in the data is that, okay, use statistically relevant words and phrases and have enough repetition so that you would feel comfortable. Basically, the, 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 the central question here is that, am I programming myself 
for self-belief and understanding or am I programming myself for misunderstanding if you know what I mean if like there is always there is always new stuff coming in and I'm I just always feel slightly less of slightly less you know valuable or smart or stuff like that and such kind of like inner inner kind of uh, insecurity can be the the biggest factor in people's failure in your case it's obviously lower because you're so conscious about uh about learning languages but that's what we see in people who are learning that i'm always you know surrounded by a language and it's i can't i can't yeah i can understand like four words and then i'm always searching for translations but in real life you don't even need like there is a high statistical probability that this word in the novel you don't actually need and you would use it by for like 0.00005% in your real life conversation so the question is why okay so <laughs> you know why for the language foundation why is it even necessary so so it all boils down to am i building the foundation of language the right way mm -hmm. and then arriving to cooler things that oh okay now i'm ready for a radio yeah it's it's funny you know um because this also reminds me of something I, I talk about quite often with people and that's we often have an idea of what's important to us from our own lang languages and the languages that we already speak so for example for me it was really important to know all the different types of birds in Macedonian when I when I first got here. <laughs> That's specific. And, and I wanted to know them all. And then I didn't realize that most people here, monolingual speakers or, or first language speakers of the language actually don't know the words themselves because they, um, they, they don't put any real importance on knowing the different types of birds. So I can learn them in English and French, maybe French people will know them a lot more, um, et cetera, et cetera. But when it gets to some other languages, actually i'm learning vocabulary that i'm only ever going to see in in a random novel or poetry yeah for sure and that's 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 a cool thing for everybody who loves languages to have this little challenge that just go through your day and notice like in a, in a mode of mindfulness just notice what are you saying and what other people are saying so I, I have a very kind of this weird mind that at the same time when i'm having a conversation that i'm always analyzing people's words and phrases uh, and my my own just to make existence interesting uh so basically yeah, it's, it's a cool way to to understand it's a cool way to understand what am i actually saying and the realization is that oh i'm expressing very deep and rich thoughts with very limited vocabulary that's the that's the realization and people who are learning with statistical relevance method they have the same they have the same kind of uh, experience uh, by the end of it. Yeah, I'm very excited to see this um, and how it works, especially because you know, taking a month to learn Estonian sounds like a crazy thing to do, might be a bit crazy to do, but it's going to be an interesting experiment and it's going to be interesting to see what Speakly can do for, for me, for Estonian. And um, obviously, like you say, I preface this with don't do this at home, folks. But the, there are lessons to be learned from the experience. Nevertheless, it's not yeah. it's not that I'm doing this just to say, oh, oh, it's amazing what I'm doing with Estonian. It's actually for me, it's an interesting thing because the only time I've learned a language this intensely is is German, and it was many many years ago. And I was in Germany, and so my initial thoughts were, I want to recreate Estonia here, like I had Germany in Germany, um, and I had all the TV around me, the radio around me, people speaking it all the time around me. <laughs> yeah it was everywhere and that was kind of my initial thought but now when as i've been talking to you i'm thinking okay maybe i just need to actually focus on what you've done in the app and and focus solely on that yeah and maybe that so, might, maybe that might just fill my day as well to be honest i may not have any time to look at any of the basic texts in these yeah in for these sure books. so the the intention the inner intention basically what you were exp you're explaining here is that i want to create the environment right so uh, and this is this is actually intuitively very correct because you know it's, it, it goes back to how we studied our native tongues as well and stuff like that. But in reality, what we see from research is that such environments can be created by thirty minutes of daily listening, uh, pretty much the same way, if it's consistent. 
you know th there is a nice there is a nice example of uh, that i always give in uh, in um, you know lectures or or training days about language learning is uh, going to the gym right so if somebody goes to the gym uh they they pick up a weight and they start just you know they they, char they start kind of like lifting <laughs> lifting it in all kinds of ways then what basically happens like if you haven't gone to the gym before is that okay your body will be thinking and i'm using very expressively the word thinking what the hell is this dude doing right because usually i don't do such movements and now for some reason out of any context this dude is doing you know either this or you know something they're yeah. doing something but in in but in our everyday lives we don't do that right we we rarely pick up something like that so when did you pick something up like that like in your everyday life we i don't know maybe so what the body is thinking is that okay that's peculiar but let's see what happens <laughs> maybe that's just a one time thing okay now tomorrow i will uh, or the day after i will go back to the gym and my body will be again thinking okay that's even more peculiar. This this thing that happened once in my lifetime now happened a second time, and this dude is again lifting something uh, in a in a peculiar way that he hasn't done ever before. But the fun thing about this theory is that if this happens sufficiently enough, and now there are different studies that would say that it it needs to be fourteen to thirty three days. That's the usual kind of the middle road here but studies have different uh, kind of uh, recommendations then after that after 14 or 30, uh, 33 days your body will be like okay i may not agree with this weird behavior <laughs> but i see that for you it's necessary therefore i will comply and help you with this right so that's the usual uh, habit creation theory but it actually doesn't come from the habit itself it comes from the agreement with from your from your body that okay i will go i will go along with this madness and it's basically the same with uh, it, it's basically the same thing with languages uh, you know if you are consistent in your daily listening just half an hour per day for estonian with those listening exercises then it will have the same sentiment that okay now this crazy language is is the part of your existence i will go with the flow uh, and it's you know what i've seen in studies and what we've studied ourselves is that it's pretty similar um not so strong but it's pretty similar to the to the real environment okay i mean i'm going to be doing it quite a lot over the over the next month so um so hopefully yeah it will my, my brain won't protest too much <laughs> <laughs> i'm sure it wouldn't <laughs> it, will, it will take on estonian and and enjoy it yeah, I mean, actually moving forwards after this month's done and to sort of, well, let's have a check in and, and talk again. Yeah, that would be really cool. And For sure. So, so this will be in Estonian, I'm sure. Well, hopefully, I mean, we'll do the whole thing in Estonian. <laughs> that would be amazing. Um, and then maybe I'll do the A2 exam if I, if I uh, manage to get to that kind of level. And we think, we think that... I'll contact the integration uh, fund already and I will just... I, I, I'll have everything organized <laughs> for your <laughs> test. <laughs> I know people there, so you'll, you'll okay. have this no pressure situation. Maybe I'll organize like a like an interview with the Estonian president or something like that. <laughs> there we go. Well, just make sure they've got a passport for me as well, so I can become Estonian. <laughs> exactly. There we go. No, well, thank you so so much for making time to talk to me and for going through everything because that really really helps me to focus my mind for tomorrow and for the next month. And um, I'll be in touch with you, obviously. But yeah. let's let's talk at the end and have a kind of a an interview, hopefully in Estonian, and we can we can uh, talk through where I'm up to with it. Using right. statistically relevant words, exactly. Yeah, please do use statistically relevant words. So <laughs> but um, but yeah, it'd be really really cool to do that uh, to sort of round it off, and then moving forwards, I guess uh, there's the intermediate stages and everything to go for. In yeah, for sure. Take it to B two. Who knows? For sure. One step at a time, though. <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's a good method. Yeah. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Speak to you soon. Speak to you soon.